Welcome back to The Source, Episode 5. We are here with a special guest, Dirk Manning, on the show. Finally, he's here, everybody. Check it out. Dirk, you want to say hi to the Hello, people? Hello, everyone, and good to see you, man. Yeah, it's been so a minute. Really. We've been so busy, so I'm, yes. I'm happy to be here with all of you and with you. And uh, yeah. yeah, man, it's, 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 it's good. So, um, obviously, most of our viewers, have, they're familiar with Dirk's work, but do you want to give a little bit of, like, history of a background? I know you've got an awesome anniversary coming up. I you've do. been doing yeah. this a while now. Yeah. Uh, as we're taping this, you know, for March is actually my 20th anniversary as a published comic book writer with the debut of uh, Nightmare World, as an online series, uh, March 6th, 2003. That's an accomplishment, man. That's like... Uh most people um, don't make it that long in the industry. <laughs> they, not not these days, anyway. Like, yeah. It's nuts. That's a long time to be able to keep climbing that whole time, too. It's uh, it's hard. Most people have their entire rise and fall within 20 years, and they're gone. Well, uh, yeah, years. yeah, yeah. 20 years is almost a career, right, at this point. Who knew? But, yeah, yeah, so it'll be 20 years, and obviously we're celebrating that. You know, with Source Point Press, I'm super excited with Nightmare World, the complete collection. Yes. That big 550-plus page collection of everything in print, a nice definitive edition. Uh, but a lot of other people may know me from things like, and I know uh, whether it be Hope, uh, the Adventures of Thulu Jr. and Friends, uh, Right or Wrong, which will be making its comeback later this year, uh, Tales of Mystery, uh, Haunted High Ons with Twisted, Buried But Not Dead, Haunted High Ons and Twisted, both being nominated for Ringo Awards in the last couple of years. Yes, yeah. But uh, mainly the, 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 the scary, borderline, enig enig enigmatic kind of guy, I guess. Mysterious. Mysterious. <laughs> Yeah, uh, speaking of this, so a lot of those, um, a lot of those titles are either available right now or available mm -hmm. for pre-order right now, or there's something big happening with them. So I know right now, uh, uh, for those who haven't read Hope, Volume One has been re-released as a special edition. Yes. Now is the time. Grab it up. You can get it on Amazon, Barnes mm -hmm. and Noble, any local comic shop, uh, sourcepointpress.com, all over the place, because Volume Two is coming up. And you definitely want to get all caught up on Hope and what's going on with her. Yeah. Um, so Hope is legit. By the way, sorry, legitimately, and, and people mainly know me as a horror guy. And even you know Travis McIntyre, you know from the company. When I first pitched him Hope, I told him this is the scariest book I've written. And, and at I, face value, it would appear to be superhero genre. Right. 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 And 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 he was kind of like, "You're doing a superhero book." You know, Kalen Smith, it just seemed like this weird thing because Kalen Smith, you know, co creator of the series. And I, I gave it I gave it to Travis at a con, and he walks away. And this is when I first self published the first issue. And he comes back about 20 minutes later, and, and you know, he, uh -huh, uh -huh. he goes, I think we can do something with this, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the, the Hope Volume 1 special edition is a reprint of the original uh, Six Age Mystery, a bunch of cool extras in there and stuff like that. Super proud of the book. But again, people that mainly know me for horror stuff that a lot of times would see Hope and be like, uh, you know, oh, you're, you're doing a, a superhero book? And I said, no, I'm doing a book about a superhero. Bit, very, very big difference. Yes. Very big difference. So yeah, Hope Volume 1, again, is one of those things that if you know me for my horror work, I cannot stress enough. Get Hope Volume 1, uh, special edition, and then get ready for Volume 2. Because that is, I don't think a week has gone by since Hope ended that someone hasn't messaged me, when is whole volume two coming out? When is whole volume two coming out? And Sally Scott, the artist on volume two, is just crushing oh, man. it. Her work is looking gorgeous. Yeah. I'm really excited about the first issue uh, that I've seen of the new volume. It's incredible. For those who don't know, the first volume really, it strikes a really interesting balance of, of like nail-biting courtroom drama and action, and there's just, uh, you you are on the edges of your seat the whole time emotionally. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. It's a punch in the gut of it, a book. It yeah, really and, and it keeps hitting you, because, like, the end of the first issue, because we did the first issue for Free Comic Book Day, I think it was yes. Source Point Press's first Free Comic Book Day book in it was 2019. It's massive numbers. Almost everyone in the world went home with a copy of that yeah, first issue. Yeah, and people read that first issue, and they're like, jaws dropping everywhere. And then they got to the end of the second issue, and Jaws dropping again. And it went on and on and on to the whole thing. And then people get to the end of the first, you know, story arc, and people are like, okay, okay. And then another jaw-dropping moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so people have been, like, beating down my door. Ready for more, yeah. yeah and, and, it's, and, and Sally's art is so gorgeous and so disarming. Yes. You know? Yeah, it, it, which it, makes the, the hits 
punch that much harder. Yes. Um, also, uh, as far as uh, anybody who's concerned about an, an art switch, honestly, I think Sally did, Sally did a beautiful. She was a perfect choice. Mm -hmm. Perfect choice. Um, Thank it's, you. It's, uh, Caitlin's always going to be Caitlin, and Sally's always going to be Cal Sally, but right. it feels seamless. Uh, it's the same vibe. It's the same tone. It's everything still there. Yeah. Um, yeah really, really good choice. Very, very much. And, and, and Caitlin is a phenom. She is Absolutely. legitimately one of my favorite artists. Same. Yeah. So is Sally. Yeah, she's and, and with Sally, Sally, you know, approaches the work differently, and she was really the right fit for this volume and the story of where we're going with it, you know. Uh, and, and people may know Sally's work from Butts and Seats, Tony Schiavone's story. Yeah. Yep. The number one Amazon bestselling book. The first ever original graphic novel advertised on cable television. Pretty awesome. Right. It's, <laughs> she was in that. And she did uh, the chapter where Tony meets his, his uh, wife, Lois. Uh, Sally also had a story in Buried But Not Dead, which was nominated for a Ringo Award. So I think a lot of people know Sally's work, but maybe don't know they know her work, right, but then when right. they look back, like, oh, she did that? Oh, she did that? Yeah, she's been around. <clears throat> and she's been doing it, yeah. She's been doing it, and she did a story in Nightmare World as well, you know. Uh, and when people see what she's doing in Hope uh, Volume 2, there's a scene, and I wish I could talk about what it is. I'll just say this. There's a scene when a character looks at a chair, and the way Sally draws it, it's like, I'm getting goosebumps right now under my suit, like, just, just like, people are going to be blown away. People are going to be blown away. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's just literally, it's a, and I would go one further, it's a character wearing a mask, looking at a chair. An empty Even chair. harder to read. And, yeah, an empty chair. But, oh my gosh, I can't wait for people, to, people are going to lose their minds, so I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. And then we also have, uh, so, Tales of Mystery Volume 5. Yes. So that is available uh, to, to order right now, too, mm -hmm. also, uh, through all the regular, you know, places. You can get that on Amazon right now, actually, mm -hmm. pre-order it. Yep. Um, there's, uh, oh my gosh, there's well, that, so well, much. Well, 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 and two, let's, you know, with, with Tales of Mystery, Volume 5 is the beginning of Act 2 of the right. whole series. It's a really good jumping on point. Right. Um, so that's an important one to note. You can definitely, there's, there's ways to get... You know the the omnibus that takes the, you know the previous volumes mm -hmm. and and the individual previous volumes. But if you just want to dive in, don't wait. Like don't wait mm -hmm. to just catch up. Go ahead and pre-order volume five now because that's going to make sure you get a copy. Because we've right. been inventories here and gone, here and gone. Here, right yeah, 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 more and more. And, and Tales of Mystery is a horror noir series. Um, it, it's. It's a, it's a book for people that want a long-form study of horror and what living in a horror universe does to one person. Years ago, someone actually came up to me at a convention and said, I see what you're doing with Tales of Mystery. And I go, oh? And he goes, this whole book is a long-form study of PTSD. He, there's definitely a major psychological he, yeah. aspect to it. Yeah, yeah. And it's taking a lot of like classic horror vibes. If you're an old-school horror fan, it's all there, but then it's just this gritty psychological take on mm -hmm. you know someone living through all this. Yeah, it's really cool. and like what it does, you know, I mean, the, the monster hunter trope has been done hundreds of ways wonderfully, whether it be through Hellblazer, through the goon. And my, my issue with those types of stories have always been, how do you cope? How do you, how do you really, I mean, you know, how, how do you really function in a world where you're the one that knows, not are you the one that knows that monsters are real, everyone else knows, but they think it's done, and you know it's not, and you're the crazy person for talking about it. So, Tales of Mystery Volume 1, it collects the first four volumes of the series, uh, beautiful, beautiful book, you know, again, 500 plus page book, just a nice bookshelf, boom, like if you just want to dig into something deep, or you can start with Volume 5, which starts Act 2. Like you said, perfect jumping on point. It's called Rockstar Paranoia. And it's about um, mystery finding out that there's a band who plans on summoning Cthulhu tonight through their concert. And just go. You know, and, and he ends up having to like, well, I don't want to get into too many more of the details, but it, it's a very, it's very fast paced. It's good. Austin McKinley's the artist on that. Again, a guy that did a lot of work in Nightmare World over the years. He has a story in Barry But Not Dead. Uh, really dynamic art style. Alessandro DeFornasari who colored Haunted High Ends, is the colorist on this one. So it's it's a really cool vibe, and it's just a good jumping on point. And if you like that book, you can go back and then read The Omnibus or wait till volume six comes out. Austin McKinley is also the developer on the Tales Mystery game. Yep. 
So yep, the video cool. game. Yeah, we did that through the Kickstarter. We, we were the first. <laughs> we were the first Kickstarter to, uh, comic book Kickstarter to ever give away a free downloadable free video game. game. It's pretty awesome. But, but again, you know, it's like that. That that's what we do. We love horror, and uh, so yeah, that's that, again. If you're just looking for good psychological character driven horror, Tales of Mystery Volume Five. I, I I'm of the belief that. Anything in my library from SourcePoint Press, whether it be a volume two, a volume five, or whatever, an omnibus, you can pick it up and jump in and read it. I think that's something that a lot of people lose as they get into long form series. Is th there's always got to be entry point. Any new thing, hope volume two, same thing. Yep. You just want to start with that first point, issue, yeah. pick it up, you'll know everything you need to know within five pages, and you're off to the races. And then you have that joy of going backwards. Yep. Like, yeah. Oh, who is this character? Being the What's completest, going on? really getting everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, Cthulhu Jr., uh, The Adventures of Cthulhu Jr. is available now. It's in shops. Yeah. It's, uh, that, it took us all by surprise. It blew the doors off with numbers. It's definitely the best-selling kids title we've had in a long time, which is great because kids' comics have been mm -hmm. really difficult in the market right now. Anything that doesn't have a toy line or a show behind it, it's really hard to get retailers excited about, but they all got excited about this. Uh, it's all ages, too. You know, it I mean, really to, be, to, be, to be fair, you know, I I enjoyed it thoroughly. So it's it's yeah, I, yeah. You know, S -scoop. big kids <laughs> <laughs> for the young for the younger. No, it's it's fun. And again, one of the things that I really enjoyed with Source Point these last couple of years is doing things like butts and seats to wrestling biography. We have the Arn Anderson book coming out, which is another wrestling biography. Then you had Buried but Not Dead and Nightmare World, which are horror anthologies. You got Tales of Mystery, which is horror noir. You got Hope which is a book about a superhero. But then you got The Adventures of Cthulhu Jr. and Friends, co-created by Scoot McMahon, who for my money is one of the best living comic book artists today. The I'm comedy gonna, I, I, aspects uh, really land. Like all, yeah. all the lines, all the, all the dialogue. And those who've read uh, Twisted Haunted High Ons know that, that Dirk can write comedy really well. Thank you. Uh, yeah, with Scoot's art, it really lands. <laughs> I, had, I was cracking up. Yeah, it's thank you. yeah, it's incredible. And... and, and it's an all ages book, you know, and it's funny because Scoot mainly is known for a lot of his, uh, his mainly for kids books, right? Which is fine. And it's funny when him and I started working on this book together, he kind of pushed back a little bit. He's like, you know, sometimes it's kind of wordy or some of this. Diff. And I said, well, remember, this is an all ages book. And, and I understand that again, the art, because it, it's so kid friendly. Yes. Yeah, I think it really kind of, I, I think some people catch them off guard, but was in 2019 for Halloween comic fest. Again, we had the first issue for free everywhere, and people are like, oh my gosh, you know. Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah. Then the pandemic Everybody happened, and it's like, well, we don't want to do an all-ages book about the end of the world during, during a pandemic. Yeah, that makes the world. So we did have to push back the release, but to all of you out there who have supported Cthulhu Jr. and Friends already, thank you. Like I said, the fact that um, it caught almost everyone. By surprise, almost everyone. By surprise, I I, I knew we were going to go hard on this. <laughs> and uh, a, again, this is a book that, and I like what you and I talked about earlier. This is a book that parents can read with their children. Yep. And yep. it's like Looney Tunes, right? The parents, the adults, we're going to get different stuff out of it than the than the younger readers are going to get. But it's something but for it's there. everyone. It's there for everybody. Yeah. It's about a wannabe supervillain who has to um, capture the son of Cthulhu to be admitted into the League of Evil. So there's something for adults to relate to. There's something for, for the kids to relate to. It's fun. It's funny. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm just tickled, and I'm tickled that people are trying to do it. And then we had the plushies coming out. The Cthulhu Junior yes, plushies yeah. will be coming soon as well. So you can, like, get your Cthulhu Junior plushie and then, you know, read with him too. And <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, so there's a pretty big announcement as far as the world of horror news goes. Yes. And I feel like that announcement is just going to keep as it really sinks and people really keep discovering it, there's going to be more and more excitement mm -hmm. and hype for this. Um, and so that is uh, a deal with the Cheney estate. Mm -hmm. Lon Cheney Jr., Lon Cheney Sr., Ron Cheney, the grandson of Lon Cheney Jr., is an uh, awesome, awesome person. Oh my gosh, he's uh, amazing. He's carrying his family's legacy in the best ways and um, sitting on a lot of really incredible content. Do you want to tell them a bit about this? Yeah, super excited to bring this to the world. And again, I want to give, again, talking about like the, the small world nature of this, I want to give public thanks to George Valakis of Magic Ninja Entertainment, yes. who is the label for Twisted. Good friend of ours. Good, and good friend of source, great guy. And George comes to me one day and he goes, you know, 
I've been talking to, to Ron Chaney and, and, you know, would you guys be interested in maybe talking about some comic book stuff for some of his, some of his work? And of course, I, I like fell over. I'm like, what? So we end up talking to, to Ron and uh, what has shaken out of this deal is we, we've announced the first two books in our partnership with Chaney Entertainment, the definitive graphic novel adaptation of the lost horror classic London After Midnight. And again, a lot of people maybe don't know they know London After Midnight, but it's like the guy with the top hat and the fangs. It's one of the most iconic yes. images in horror. Most people alive today are very familiar with the remaining marketing that was done for this big film, mm -hmm. but they haven't seen it because it's been lost since the 60s. So yeah, there's yeah, it's a gone. lot of horror fans like myself who have never gotten to watch this movie, and it's soul-crushing. Absolutely right. soul crushing. So you never get the full story um, because of it, because there's there's no way to access it. But you're working straight from the original film script. Yes, I, I I'm one of those guys that, and, and I say this with no exaggeration. Every time I would go to a horror convention, whether it be as a fan or as a professional, I would be looking through tapes and looking through DVDs, just like hoping because there's always been rumors, right, that someday someone like. Like, Bloody Disgusting has run articles over the years. Like, oh my god, someone may have found the print. No, no, no. Oh, wait. I've gotten my hopes up a million times yeah, with people yeah. who claim. They're like, I yeah. think I have I one. have it. Like, no. Because it's so hard to believe that it, one fire took away everyone's access to this film. Yes. Uh, there's got to be another print somewhere hey. is what everybody you know believes. And people have tried to piece together... Mm -hmm. Kind of like a partial film from stills and lobby yeah. cards and any little bits of footage they had from like trailer releases. And, and it's, it's not the same. It's and then not the same. When Ron sent me the script, again, I'm getting those goosebumps. I was like, well, the moment's like, I am holding the film script to the holy grail of horror. So true. And uh, then to be working with Mariana Pescosta, who's the artist on Haunted High Ons, she again. I, I hate to say this about people that I'm friends with or work with. Again, one of the best living comic book illustrators in the world right now. She's amazing. Absolutely. She's been nominated for Ringo Awards as well, stuff like that. She's incredible, incredible artist. But yeah, holding that script and then seeing Mariana turn these pages for this, it's transcendent. So when we were talking about this, then, and this is, I, I want to put you over a little bit on this, um, we're talking, and then as it turns out, uh, Ron had a unproduced sequel to The Wolfman. The Wolfman. And along with George from MNE, uh, Josh is one of the, I hope you don't mind me calling you out of this, I think one of the biggest Wolfman fans I know. I am, it's true. And uh, <laughs> literally it was like, like that, that bit like in the movies when they could hear like the, like the record needle drag, when he happened to bring it up in passing, oh, it was like, oh yeah, yeah, we got the sequel to Wolfman. And I'm like, <laughs> like wait, what? <laughs> and one of my proudest moments was getting to come to the office and be like, by the way, Josh, how would you feel about adapting this unproduced sequel to The Wolfman? And, I, and I'm, I'm glad they didn't have to catch you when you almost fainted. For real, uh, I was blown away. Uh, in fact, uh, if I remember correctly, I mean, I was on the phone with you for a while about talking about it while I was at home standing in front of my little, like, Wolfman shrine. Uh, and for those who haven't seen it, there's, like, some weird, like, uh, little videos on TikTok and YouTube where I, I take around the room and just show stuff in the background that you can't really see on camera all the time. Right. There's a lot of Wolfman stuff up, up there. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm very very excited. Yeah, it's called Curse of the Wolfman, uh -huh. um, and uh, anybody who's into honestly anyone who's into monster movies, classic horror, any kind of horror, this thing is is really really great. Obviously, there's a lot of work that goes into taking a film script and adapting it to graphic mm -hmm. novel format because the way the reader digests the content is very differently. Very much. So. You really do have to change uh, as a as a comic writer. You have to be able to control the pacing in a way yes. that is more difficult. You have to really get your hands on the reader and embrace them because a movie they have no choice. The pacing is what the pacing right. is. Right. But right. controlling how someone reads is different and it requires a it requires a lot of skill so and a lot of thought so yeah. um it's well fun. it's so fun i'm so enjoying fun. it as well it's so much fun um so yeah those are things to look forward to mm -hmm. and uh i think it's going to i think it's gonna be huge honestly I, I, it's be a little piece of horror history I, i'm so excited and if you would have told me 20 years ago when i was just getting started or even three or four years ago that hey 
you're going to have a number one best-selling book on Amazon. You're going to have the first original graphic novel uh, advertised on cable television. You're going to be nominated for Ringo Awards three years in a row. Which, by the way, people can nominate Tales of Mystery Volume 5 for Best Original Graphic Novel this year. Make it a four, make it a four-peat. <laughs> well, I don't want to be greedy at this point. <laughs> you know, but, and then to be given the, the honor, the true honor, to take one of the most iconic lost horror films of all time... And then bring it out publicly forever, you know. Uh, and then to get to work with Mariana, who's one of my one of my best friends, uh, to do this. And then with Source Point Press, who obviously I have so much love for the publisher and what we're doing. It's it, it blows me away, you know. And I think back to two thousand three, and again coming full circle with the Nightmare World stuff, being one of the first people to fully uh, to publish fully realized graphic novels online, two pages a week. When and this is gonna this is gonna date me. When I didn't even have an internet connection at home, <laughs> right? I would have to go to my really parents' nice. house or the library to see the pages of Nightmare World up online, right? Yep. And and now to have three, I was in the library too. Yeah, yeah. And now to have the complete, you know, five hundred plus page definitive edition of this book coming out, and working with Ron Chaney and Twisted and some other stuff we even have with Hopper that I'm not allowed to talk about yet. It's 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 incredible, you know, and it. It, it, it's just amazing, and 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 I want to thank SourcePoint. I want to thank all of you who've supported the work for so long. I mean, it's 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 incredible. It's just really cool. And again, for people that love classic horror, this London After Midnight adaptation, it's literally directly from the script. And and anything that we tweak, because again, sometimes you got to tweak things just a tiny bit, you know, because there's no sound on a comic book page, you right, know, things right. like that. Um, I always run everything through Ron. Whenever we work on, at least whenever I work on licensed property stuff, whether it been Butts and Seats or uh, My Life is the Enforcer or the Arn Anderson uh, book, or even with Haunted High Ons and now with Lon Chaney's uh, properties with Ron, nothing about you without you, right? And and having Ron involved in every step of it and approving it. And I feel so weird, like, making even a tiny little tweak. I'm like, oh, God, I'm, I'm, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't. I don't want to leave my thumbprint on London After Midnight. I mean, there's, I would be lying if I said part of your ego is like to know, like, I did that thing. Right. right. You know, I did yeah. that. I, I put that scene in with the maid, you know, but that's not the purpose. The purpose is to deliver the definitive edition of it. I think years ago, uh, James O'Barr, who, you know, created The Crow, one, again, one of the most influential comic books, I would argue, of all time. You know, I think a lot of the, 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 comic books to movie stuff can be traced back to the crow. When I was a, a, a young little booth barnacle going to the shows and just hanging out at James O'Barr's table, uh, he told me something I've never forgotten. He said, when you create a comic and then you take it to Hollywood and it's made into a film, he goes, your property is like a baby tree. And he goes, and everyone, every producer that comes along, everyone that comes along is like a dog. And they pee on the tree. <laughs> and then they take credit for when it grows. And I think about that. That's hilarious. I, I, I've literally, that, that is like, right? But that's lived in my brain ever since, you know, 17-year-old Dirk Manning was, was hanging out with James O'Barr, who, by the way, did the cover to the Tales of Mystery Omnibus. Again, small world. But I think about that adapting London After Midnight. I don't want to come in and change things just so I can say, see that part? Right, right. That was me. That's not the, that's not the point. So, so treating this with the utmost reverence, but also recognizing, to your point, sometimes we have to shift things around a little bit. You have to tell the, the, best, the story in the best way for the format. Yes. And so there's going to be a natural amount of changes that have to happen mm -hmm. to do that, just to be able to do that well. Right. If it was a straight adaptation, it wouldn't be as good of a read. It right. has to be crafted for this this uh, this medium, yes, and there's there's no way that you can do that without leaving a little bit of your imprint. Uh, and no matter what, you are now responsible for what's going to be an entire generation of horror fans mm -hmm. getting to experience the story for the first time. No pressure, <laughs> right? I mean, right. a story that every horror fan is aware exists, but very few have actually been able to you know, hear the story, see the story, yeah. read the story in any good way. So there's a few, there's a few rough adaptations out there, like prose adaptations, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is no one good definitive one. And it, until now, this working, is going to be it. This is it. Working directly with Ron Chaney and things like that, you know. And 
Yeah, it's just gro and you know, and again, you know, looking at like you said, the legacy of these. We just lost the last Universal Monster. Yes, that you know, was a a tough day. It was, and and the fact that that impacts us so much. And I remember my mom taking me to the theater to see Creature from the Black Lagoon in three D. So cool, right? Yeah. And and like that that helping mold who I am now, just affirming who I am now. And now, like it's funny. And, and mom, if you're watching this, mom and dad, I, I'm not. I'm not calling you out, but I swear they call me more ever since they found out I'm working on the Cheney book. <laughs> they, like, so have you talked to Have you talked to uh, Cheney recently? How's that book coming along? There, you know, because they're excited about it. Because right, my, right. my parents are horror movie fans as well, and and knowing that I'm 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 getting to help, having the honor to curate this and bring this to everyone through SourcePoint Press, it's just. Again, man, twenty years in the game, and and to be at this spot, it's 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 a and, and I and I it may sound weird for a horror guy to use this word, but it's such a blessing. It's such a blessing through all the ups and downs to be here to be in this spot and and have this library of work through a publisher that I have so much respect for and so much love for and and being you know being being there at ground zero with SourcePoint even even though I wasn't directly publishing with with SourcePoint yet at the time, but to have my problem. And to have everything with source point and to move forward and see the growth of the company and see this great stuff we're bringing about, you know, even a lot of the stuff you have coming out, the Crossbone Scully and, and all these things, it's just, we're in a new golden age of comics. It's true. We're yeah. in a new golden age of comics. Whether you're looking at adaptations of some material that's never existed to brand new properties, whether it be all ages books, new, t definitively, unequivocally new takes on superhero content to horror. SourcePoint is bringing all of this stuff to the table right now, and it's just it's when it just cool. comes to horror, there's something to be said about the horror community, horror mm -hmm. fans. Obviously, there's lots and lots of, in the world we work in, there's a lot of different smaller subdivisions of communities. There's like, you know, mm -hmm. the cosplay community, there's the general comic community, there's, you know, mm -hmm. the manga community. Horror community is my favorite, first of all. They're just, yeah, yeah. It, they're yeah. such good people. They're so open to trying new things, and... SourcePoint and you specifically have been really good at getting comic books as a storytelling medium into horror uh, fans' hands, even if they don't normally purchase comics or go to comic book shops. Mm -hmm. They're more than willing to grab onto the medium as another yes. outlet for their passions and what they love, uh, and horror translates to comics so beautifully, um, but they need places like us and people like you to bring them that content. And that is something that I think you should be really proud of. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, uh, as much as people sometimes uh, affiliate me with grandiose self-promotion, it's not something that I'm inherently personally comfortable with. That being said, I've taken exceptional pride from way back in the early, again, going back to 2003, I tell people all the time, MySpace made my career. <laughs> it did. But because, to your point, when I was doing Nightmare World as an online series, and remember, you can now get Nightmare World, the complete collection, pre-order from SourcePoint Press, um, I, was I did not cater that series to comic book fans. Comic book fans back on MySpace and in the internet, they, they were talking, they were more interested in debating who's stronger, Hulk or Thor, and stuff like that. But that's right. fine. I'm not, I'm not bagging that. But I catered Nightmare World from day one to horror fans. Directly to them, Directly yeah. to the horror fans. And they, 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 they gravitated to it and they helped buoy my career and, and made now being in this position possible. And it's so funny, when I would set up at horror conventions early on, people would come by my booth and it'd be one, it'd be one of a couple of reactions, like, they still make comic books? <laughs> yes, right? some of that right? sometimes. Yeah. Or, or they would say, oh my gosh, horror comics. I haven't seen stuff like this from, Tales, from the Tales from the Crypt stuff back you know, decades right. ago. Yeah. Then they would buy everything. Or the third group would, would be like, are these available digitally? And they would literally buy it in front of me online. You know, now you can go to like global comics, things like that. But they would go and they would just buy it online. They said, you know, I don't have a lot of room in my apartment or my house or whatever, but I want this content. <laughs> And they would just download it and say, look, I want to let you know I supported this. Because as much as I love Comic-Cons, and as much as I'm appreciative for everyone that goes to Comic-Cons and supports my work, people, I think, sometimes have a misrepresentation of what the horror con and the horror community is like. And the horror community is some of the most generous, supportive, show up. kind, 
They show up, they show out, they're generous, they're wonderful. And people like hear a horror con, they're like, oh my God. I'll go on record saying that when you take all your different convention populations, horror con people are the nicest. It's so true. I mean, and I'm not saying that to put down Comic Cons no, or anything else. It's true. They, they the are, horror community, we, we, we're, we're about love. They we really about, are. Uh, about that. It, it's so funny because, you know, you, you go to a, like a Days of the Dead convention or something and mm -hmm. you're in a hotel and people who are not there for the convention are going, oh my gosh. Right. Because it's, it's a, such a diverse <laughs> assortment of of wild, you know, people watching. Um, yeah. But I was in Atlanta. Uh, I ended up, um, I had all of my stuff stolen. I had uh, oh, yeah. my my convention cash taken, my wallet, my phone, my um, uh, my computer, like everything. So basically all I had to my name was the product that was on my table. And I didn't have a way to charge people. I had no change to make, nothing. And all I had was two days of cash sales to be able to get gas to get back mm -hmm. and my car was busted a bit you no know, wind back windshield um and everyone at that convention lined up with cash in their hands right. other guests uh there were like celebrity guests they all got in line and said i'll take i'll take 50 dollars worth of stuff i'll take 20 dollars worth of stuff mm -hmm. whatever they could give and it was all because they heard what had happened, and they right. just were like, "That's what we do for each other," you know. Yes, it was beautiful man. It was yeah, yeah. Oof, it, I was. Uh, I know it's like you're like right now. You're saying this like, "Those are our people. Those yeah. are our people." And yeah. it, it, and again, it, it's just, it, it's a wonderful community, and and I and I really, again, on a personal level, I really appreciate you recognizing that because that's been something that on a personal level, I've always wanted to continue to grow the envelope of what we can what we can offer different communities and bring them to this medium that I love so much. Bring them to this medium that has given me so much personally and professionally. I always said from day one, I'm a horror guy. I'm also a comic guy, right? And, and I love the medium of comics and I, and I value so much the opportunity with SourcePoint to be able to do this stuff and the support that everyone's shown. And again, it, it just, it, it, it keeps getting me and I'm like, my God, 20 years. I was like, how? How, how, it doesn't even make sense <laughs> to me, you know. But when you look back at all the, the milestones and things like that, you know, um, and uh, and again, the horror community has been a big part of that. I, I Obviously, the comic community continues to, to embrace, you know, what, what we're doing. And that's why it's fun, too, to now, especially last year or two, I can do the book about a superhero. I can do the all-ages horror book, right? I can do a, I, I love professional wrestling. I can do a professional wrestling book. And, and start to show those uh, different facets of what I enjoy and work with great people. But at the end of the day, it's always going to be about that horror. It's always going to be about the tales of mystery. It's always going to be about Nightmare World. It's going to be about, you know, Homestead and these other, um, yeah, spoiler, these new books coming out that, that really, really embrace my love of, my love of horror and, and this, this genre and bringing that horror genre to this medium with SourcePoint Press. And that's all because of you guys. Very can't, much so. Can't take those next steps and try out those new things with, without you. So uh, your pre-orders, they make a really big difference. Huge difference. Uh, without those, just keep in mind for everybody who's watching, you know, I know people are used to retail from uh, going to a store and buying off a shelf, but mm -hmm. pre-orders for publishers determine how many they're going to print yes. or if they're even going to print at all. Mm -hmm. If stores don't know that you want it, they are not going to get it. And if they don't get it, then the publisher can't print it. And, so and I'm going to need you. And I'm going to take that one step farther too, especially with books that exist outside of the prevalent genre in our medium. Yes. Which, and again, the ones that need the, the most support I'm early not, on. Yeah. I'm not bagging superhero books at all. I write a book about a superhero now, but traditionally, our, our friends in comic book retail, they're going to bet on Spider-Man, they're gonna bet on Batman and things like that because that's what they know. If you want a book, if you're like, man, that Tales of Mystery sounds interesting or Nightmare World, the Nightmare World Omnibus is a $60 book, it's 500 plus pages, that's not something the store's gonna say, I'm gonna order five of these and see who right. buys them. But if they know you want it, they should order it for you. And then if they don't, then you look to your other, your online alternatives like, you know, the, like Amazon and things like that, or directly from SourcePoint Press's website. But it's crucial to your point, Josh, that we let store owners know what we want because we saw this back in the day with Haunted Ions. I was at the Diamond Retailer Summit, right, the 2019. I went up there in front of everyone and said, 
the the fans of Twisted are going to be coming to your shops to get this right. book. Warning. War I, I warned I, right on stage. I said, look, I'm not telling you how to do your job, but I'm telling you, you may not be prepared for the influx of people coming in. Some stores listened and they were fine. Because that's what we're telling you guys to do is to go there. Right. And, 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 and what happened it, was, it was when, yeah, when the issue one hit the shelves, those books. everyone shows up. But by then, pre-orders were in for issue three, yep. and they went down, and they didn't have enough. There was there was a crisis. There was a crisis where mm -hmm. people didn't trust that they were gonna, you guys were gonna show up for those books. So they started off here, and then they're like, "Well, <laughs> we're gonna bring it down to here." All of a sudden, people came, blew out of everything, and mm -hmm. yeah, sold out right in the middle of the series. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had that. And issue three comes out, and it's like gone, and and people wanted them so. Those pre-orders, those either taking the time to watch these interviews, things like that, let your comic book stores know, yeah, uh, like, hey, I'm going to show up cash in hand when the name of uh, the complete collection drops, or please make sure you pre-order me this new issue of Hope. That's interesting. Or Cthulhu Jr. I, I want I want an all. I want a book that I can introduce a young person in my life into horror. Make sure you get me a Cthulhu Jr., please. One way you can do this really easily, obviously, if you have a, a favorite comic shop and you go there, even if it's once in a while, when you go in there, make it official. Tell them, write this down, put it on your pull list. Mm -hmm. But along the way, when you see someone talking about a book coming up online, make sure you're following all your favorite comic shop social media accounts. Yes. If they have them and you see that, immediately take that second while you're there to tag your shop in a comment and say, mm -hmm. hey, I'm interested in this. I hope you guys will carry it. That little bit, that difference during that time, as they start to see those comments, mm -hmm. that's what they pay attention to. They pay Absolutely. attention to you much more than anything we put in that catalog. Yeah. I, I can tell them to order my books, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> Some of you out there are laughing along, right? It's like, you know, going back we, to... We Cthulhu. try that every month. Right, right. right. <laughs> going back to Cthulhu Jr. Like, it, it, you know, the joke was that caught everybody off guard. And I'm like, not everybody, right? You know, it's like, it's a situation where... They need to hear from you, and, and the, 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 the democracy of this process is so crucial. And you're right, taking a moment to tag, you know, I'm on all social media, all, all social media platforms, at Dirk Manning. You know, you see the guy at the top hat and the scarf. Ironically, that kind of looks like the character from London After Midnight. Mm, full circle. Full circle. But yeah, just, just tagging your local shops. And don't, don't spam them or harass them, but just say, hey, you know, hey, uh, Pack Rat Comics, make sure to order me this, right? That makes a difference. That way they know that the money they're putting out, that you will then come in and get it. And then go in and get it, right? Support your local businesses. Support each other. If you don't have a local comic shop, I understand. Then you can look at your online retailers. You can look at your Amazon. You can come to SourcePointPress.com directly, order it from us directly. But by all means, if you have local, support local. Because all of this matters. All of this matters so much. And, and uh, it, it helps just buoy everything that all of us are doing. Do you want to leave anybody with one big takeaway, something they should run out and pre-order right now, or best place to uh, keep track of what you're up to? Like I said, this month is the 20th anniversary of Nightmare World. It's huge. The impact of that series, and for those of you that don't know what Nightmare World is, uh, it's the first comic series I ever wrote. It's 52 standalone stories. E uh, most of them are done by a different artists on our team. I wrote everything. And each story is a different subgenre of horror, all 52 of them. But as you keep reading these standalone stories, they all weave into one giant story right in front of you. Nightmare World, the Complete Collection, is a trade paperback edition of the book. It's the first time that all four volumes have been collected, as well as the story one content yeah. from the previously Kickstarter exclusive book called The Nightmare Nomicon, which was like my, like my director's notes on how all these things connect, and here's little pieces of the puzzle. Um, for a lot, for a generation of readers, uh, in fact, a couple of years back, someone came to me at a Comic Con and said, I used to read Nightmare World online. They're like, oh my God, that's awesome. They said, yeah, now I buy the books and read them to my kids. <laughs> 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 but um, Nightmare World is a horror. I, I've told people since day one, this will be your new favorite horror comic. It's definitely, it's a piece of horror comic hi history. If you were to look at like, well, what are all the top horror comics throughout time? Mm -hmm. it's, it's part of the iconic horror comics in history. And, and, sure. and, and quite frankly, and I, there's a new forward in the book where I'm going to be talking about this. It's also one of the foundational elements of what became known as online webcomics. Yeah, it was online the comics. very beginning of that we, era. We were, we were the ground floor of that. 
uh, and, and with the with the printing through source point press it's going to now be one of the this is a weird a weird flex but you know bear with me nightmare world is a comic that has been published by more publishers over the years than almost any other comic in North America. And you got interest right out the gate from Image. I mean, yeah, it was an yeah. Image book first. Yeah. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's always been a creator-owned title, mm -hmm. but it's amazing how many publishers have wanted to keep Nightmare World alive and keep carrying this through. Right. And, and now it's home. You know, now this is the first time I've offered this truly, the complete, it's called Nightmare World, the complete collection. This is everything. It's here. Uh, I, I wanted to, to, to do a version of like this, the book that's accessible. It's not this Kickstarter exclusive, leather bound, gold gilded page, right, giant right. hardcover book. It's like, here's a $60 book. It's almost, it's close to 600 pages. Boom, everything. This is it, the complete collection. So um, I, I would say that's a book that if you, if you love horror, get into that. If you just want to sample an issue of something, Hope. Hope volume two, number one, it'll wreck you. And if, you really, and if you're completist, go get that Hope Volume 1 Special Edition. It is a gorgeous printing of the book. It has some cool extras in it. Again, it's going to emotionally just wreck you. Now's the perfect time to talk to your shop about both. You can say, mm -hmm. hey, uh, do you have Hope Volume 1 here? No. Can you get it in for me? They'll say, yes. Yep. Uh, it's in stock. Then, It'll be here in a week or two or whatever. Yeah. And then while you're at it, put me on the pull list for Hope Volume 2. Yep. And that's the per it's the perfect time right now to support that series. Yeah. Yeah. All ages. If you're looking for, again, uh, if you're looking to bring a younger person in your life into horror, Cthulhu Jr. Yeah. If you want really a character-driven horror noir series with a with a long-term character, Tales of Mysteries is my longest-running series of Volume 5. Volume 5, five, volume yeah. five. Go back at the omnibus if you want with the first four volumes, including Volume 1 in full color for the only time in the collection. Um, yeah, there's just, there's just a lot of entry points. But if, but if you've watched the interview this long, which, again, thank you for, the, for this, um, I hope you'll check it out. You know, it may, every single purchase, whether it be in person at a convention or ideally through your local comic shop, makes a difference. It makes it possible for all of us and the artists I, get to, I have the, the pleasure of working with to get to keep creating new original content for all of you. And that's, that, that's why we do this stuff. We do this to create new original content for all of you. So, Thank you all for the opportunity. Thank you for 20 years. Thank you to SourcePoint Press for being such a, a, a wonderful partner in this process for many, many years. Heck yeah. And so, like you said, at Dirk Manning on social media, if you're not already signed up for Dirk's newsletter, uh, that is the best way to know about all releases, all the timing, yep. convention appearances, everything. Definitely yep. get, yeah. get on the newsletter. DirkManning.com. You can go sign up. I, yep. No spam. All killer, no filler. First week of every month, I just send an email. Just a letter. Hey, here's what's going on. So, yeah, thank you. That's another good way to stay in touch. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the better comic newsletters, honestly. Oh, thank you. So, thank you so much for, uh, for watching, you guys, and thanks for being here, Dirk. Oh, really man, thank it. you, my yeah, friend. Absolutely. I'm excited about what's to come, and thank it's all of you again for watching. Good year. Very good year ahead. 20 years of terror, my friends. 20 years of terror. Thanks, everyone.